what was that? I thought I heard something. It had come from without. Though it was dark, my eyes had grown used, and so I looked to the door and waited. A small click, and the jostle of a turn signaled it was now unlocked. At last, I found you. Aww. Our knight. Lupin? What, what are you doing here? Is it not obvious? I've come to escort you. You've been a naughty girl again, haven't you? His appearance and my state were as such that I could not understand it, but he was here. He stepped forwards to hold me, and in the seconds he first did so, that horrible cold that possessed me was thwarted. Thank you. But how did you get in here? My master key is ever the loyal companion. Oh, that! You never threw it away, then? Of course not. One can never be too prepared. Holmes, too, carries a number of things that would cause the law to turn up his nose in disgust. That's different! But I suppose I owe it to that key that I can now escape. Huh. I sighed, and every muscle in my body relaxed. At last, the tension was gone. So, my belle princess, will you allow me to steal you away? Lupin said this to me in a sweet whisper, with a docility that made sense of the awful situation without asking. He made me feel so safe that were I to cry then, I could do it knowing he was there to hold me. Will you return me to my rightful owner? The castle must be in an uproar because of your disappearance. But you must know, the true owner of your heart is me. Duh. My, my heart. <laughs> Lupin led me out of the mansion with care. The clear night air, which I had not breathed for too long, was ambrosia to my lungs. I'm certain your butler will take care of the rest from here. Pendleton? Was he here? We met one another at the entrance, yes. Your carriage's coachman sent him a message. Something to that effect. I see. I'm sure this all could have been avoided if not for my actions. Not at all. The Earl would be the one to blame. Do you honestly believe someone capable of such underhanded tactics doesn't possess any other skeletons in his closet? The truth was clear the moment I stepped into that mansion. It is a hive of stolen goods. That auction was his way of laundering them all. How awful. The only thing on my mind when I stepped inside was my silverware. And what a lack of class. At least I make a dirty deed look tasteful. Oh my. I never thought you would admit it. When I looked up, I was at a loss. I never knew he could wear such an expression of sorrow. I'm just... I'm so happy you're safe, Emily. I truly am. Ah. Oh. Lupin drew me in to take my breath away, as he so often had in the past. I felt his arms along my waist, hooked at my back to keep me close. I missed his touch. So sensitive I was to it now that I was overcome with emotion. He gave me a light kiss before speaking again, his attention only on me. I know my job includes returning the rescued princess to her castle. And yet, I have no desire to leave you. Would... Would you care to stay with me a while longer? How could he ask me when he knew the answer? I didn't want to look away for even a moment, and so, unblinkingly, awkwardly, I gave the smallest nod of my head. I'm going to whisk you off elsewhere in an instant. Close your eyes and trust in me to be your guide. All right. Like... this? The wind was gentle that night. As I leant against him, his scent continued to ease me in a way nothing else surely could. I did not recall closing my eyes, nor did I recall time passing before I next opened them. Well, we're here, my princess. Whoa! Where is here? Where? Wow, Schwank. Hello? 
Where is here? What happened? We were outside, and then quite suddenly to me, we were wherever here happened to be. Where are we? We're at a suite in one of the finest hotels in London. This is one of my many hideouts, as it happens. Oh. Wow. You couldn't have brought me here when you stole me away from Holmes' route. Although you put me in, like, your mom's old room. So you know what? That's actually more special. Never mind. I rescind my complaints. The room was illumined by candles, giving its walls an affectionate red hue. It took only moments to observe its extravagant furnishings. Portraits, a canopied bed, and a cozy chair on which I was sitting. Lupin stood next to me with a glass in hand. There was more. A table lined with roast chicken, mashed potatoes, fish pie, berry tarts, and whatever else I could have very much been in the mood for upon waking. Oh man, roast chicken and mashed potatoes sounds divine. Where on earth did this food come from? And how are we here? Weren't we just outside? <laughs> Lupin chuckled before taking my hand to interlock our fingers. You see, I used magic. A magnificent spell that allows us to be alone together. What? Don't be silly. Magic isn't... I don't believe in magic. But we're alone now, aren't we? Well, we are, but that can't mean you can use magic, surely. No, there must be some trick to it. You won't even have the heart to eat till you've solved this mystery, won't you, your highness? Then I shall reveal my secret. That secret being... No secret at all. You were tired after your terrible ordeal. From there, you found enough security in my arms to bid yourself a deep, restful sleep. I placed you in this chair delicately upon our arrival so as not to wake you, and there you remained. That is all. Oh. Really? I hadn't noticed I was so tired. You must have been. You were out the moment you closed your eyes. So, are you ready to eat now? I would delight in feeding you myself, if you prefer. I I'm quite comfortable feeding myself, thank you. I'll start with this here. Days of no proper meal reminded me anew how good food can ta could taste. I miss this. How wonderful food on an empty stomach was. Dang! This boy thinks of everything. Yet I came to my senses quickly when I noticed Lupin hadn't taken a single bite. He simply watched me. A content contended? Probably should be contented. <laughs> I'm contending with you. <laughs> how dare you eat in front of me? contented expression crossing his face. Uh, aren't you going to eat anything? When it is more fun to watch you, I wouldn't miss that. But it's rather difficult to relax when you stare at me so. Why? Come, open your mouth and gorge yourself till your cheeks are fat with stuffing. I would enjoy the sight. How can you say that? I won't eat another bite now. You blush so often, but I still swoon upon the sight every time. You're making it worse! I regained my composure shortly by means of distracting myself. The first thing that caught my attention were the numerous portraits along the walls. Rather, it was a single portrait that impressed me over the rest. One of a dignified man with a boldly clipped moustache and royal-colored eyes sharpened by a natural dominance. Lupin, do you know who that is? He's my grandfather, on my mother's side. He owns several castles deep in the mountains of France, where I am from. And it is not just him. All of these are portraits of my family. In a hotel? Are we in a hotel? If it's his hideout, has he just hung up? Portraits of his family? I I've got questions. <laughs> huh. He has castles in France? And are any of these portraits of your mother? Unfortunately, no. They set fire to her portraits when she left home. 
Oof. That's so sad. No matter how hard I've searched, I've never been able to find a single portrait of her. And I cannot steal what I cannot find, can I? Even if he spoke of it to a frivolous melody, he could not disguise the hurt that lay beneath. She was a woman of astounding beauty, so there is no end to the painters who wish to commit her to canvas. To capture such beauty in a portrait for all to see. I thought that there must be a portrait of her left somewhere. There was a time when I obsessed over finding one, but that time has long since passed. I was an idiot back then, truly. Finding a portrait was never going to bring her back to me. Still, it's nice to remember. I bet if anybody has one, it'd be Moriarty. It was ever melodious, the soft laugh of his, the soft laugh of his before he turned his back to me. <laughs> I'm a gentleman thief. I chase what I want. And yet there is often times a paralyzing fear that the chase will come to nothing. But the chase continues against my fears. For I am greedy, and I am a liar. Lupin! I threw my arms around him from his back. Lupin did not expect this. There was an instinctive resistance that came from being surprised, but it only made me hold him tighter. My forehead rested between the blades of his back. Though I was ready to speak, I wish I could have said my part, knowing his face. I'm so grateful it was you who came to my rescue. And I'm so sorry for worrying you. If I hadn't been so consumed with that memento, not at all. You should take what you want more often. He placed his hand over mine. But you're much too righteous and modest to do that. That's why I wanted to be the one to give you what you wanted. It's funny to hear a gentleman thief speak of charity. I merely believe that art has a right to choose who is to keep it. He finally turned to me. I could read in his violet eyes a desire that was all too direct for any evasion. My heart thumped from a welcome expectancy I entertained no further. And to it, which he certainly had to notice, he said nothing. L Lupin? What is it? <laughs> Before I could ask, I was lifted from the chair in a competing mix that was dainty as it was urgent. Oh boy. I don't, I don't think I'm prepared for what's about to occur. Oh boy, I am not ready. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> the mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, surely there's more mashed potatoes I could eat first, right? Okay, no. All right, we're, we're doing this, guys. <laughs> Let us all hold hands together as we go through this. Our destination was to the canopy bed. You've had your hand on your back for a while, haven't you? Was it injured? Let me see. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm surprised she doesn't have any bruises considering the massive beating she took. Huh? My lack of innocence proved rattling ideas and no response as he wished. To show my back would require unbuttoning my blouse. It took little to picture the result of exposed skin where I now lay. It's alright! I swear it, it's just a bit numb, so I wouldn't worry about... Just let me help you. He certainly did not play the fool in this scenario, but there was, before his boyhood eagerness, a humility that placed my agreement first and foremost. It was this side of him that was perhaps the most adoring. Sorry. I don't mean to be so adamant as to make you wary. I just want to be sure you're all right. I don't want to learn that I could have done something after it's too late. May I? His concern was sincere. The more he waited, the more a docile manner emerged. And I understood this manner, for if I were in his position, I would have been as concerned for him as he was for me. Yes, you may. I'll tell you when it's all right to, um, to look, so if you could turn away for now. Of course. Lupin obeyed. 
My fingers were paused at my collar to make certain he would remain obedient, and he was. Though I had unbuttoned myself a thousand times, his presence made it feel as though it were a first. I fumbled through trembling hands down the row. S stay calm now. It's only your back you're showing him. Girl, he's seen everything already. Although, I say that, he may have been too distracted by your nape to actually look at anything. <laughs> so, carry on. Never had the sound of clothing sliding down skin been as loud as it was this moment. My shoulders became bare, and my face dyed a deeper shade of red that I never realized could be achieved. Yeah, alright. At least she thought of this. What reason is there to be embarrassed? This is nothing new to him. Why, in that cave? After all the time I'd taken to forget that, there it was again. The memory froze my hands in place. Emily. Here. Yeah. A certain scent seemed to hang in the air when, as Lupin, without looking, placed his coat over my shoulders. Use this. I'd hate for you to get cold. Th thank you. The smell makes it feel as though his arms are wrapped around me. The act allowed me to finish undressing myself. It's all right to... To look now. It was my turn to face my back to him, and as I did so, all sensitivity concentrated to this one exposed surface. His coat became my new blouse at the front, a foreign fabric that I had to quickly adjust to feeling, lest my mind get the better of me in a period of magnificent anxiety. Can I just, like, take that portion and just be at certain times when someone's like, How are you? Oh, you know, I'm in a period of magnificent anxiety. <laughs> Still, I could not. The thought of him looking at my back with a harshly observant gaze, be it from want or concern, would not leave me. I concentrated my focus to the floor in hopes of dismissing it, but the imagination is a persistent thing. Aww. It is a bit red. <laughs> He cradled me in a careful, precious motion to prevent my being startled, but the act was pointless beyond being gentlemanly, for the whisper of his voice next to my ear was enough to stir me. I fell and hit the ground before. When you were imprisoned. But you didn't fall, did you? You... It's all right. It's in the past. I understand what happened now. I should have punched that imbecile a few more times. Let's take a look at this. That is super duper cute. You guys, though, look like you've aged into young adults <laughs> in the CG. <laughs> like, you don't look like teens anymore. You look like you're in your early 20s. <laughs> he enveloped me as I leant back into him, and to this I was rewarded with the heated rhythm of breath on skin. You're shivering. Are you cold? N not at all. Really? But you're like a kitten that's been left in the rain. Ah. Uh. My mind went numb. This was pleasant. More than pleasant, really. What are you doing to her? Shh. Dear kitten, I would ask that you not bite your pretty lips. I never noticed my doing so, but he did, placing a finger at my bottom lip to stop me. More anxiety. Another burst of anticipation. The mixture came to color my cheeks, puff my lips, soften my brow, colliding in a most intriguing way that I had never felt before with anyone. But how? With such an assuming, light touch, how? I thought then. A prince of fairy tales could not pluck a forest flower with more care than the way he cared for me. I'm not a, a kitten. So you aren't. You are a woman who is slim and soft, but brave. You sparkle with more shine than any gem I've ever seen. You make me want to kiss you. To show you my love and admiration. <laughs> then my nerves cried in a valiant protest from a new warmth. It was a kiss. 
A kiss Lupin planted at the back of my neck. A sweet, small kiss that did the damage of kisses with ten times the passion. Surely he could say something. Surely he could see how I blushed. Surely he knew my heart was racing and that I could no longer take the suspense. Speak, Lupin! Speak! L Lupin. Instead, I called his name in a voice that was as pitiful as it was hoarse. Yet he ap appeared to hear it, caressing my hair whilst responding. Whenever you say my name, I'm elated beyond measure. And then I want more. I want to hear you say more than my name. To listen for the inflection your voice makes as it leaves your lips. And then, in a single motion, did my world turn upside down. Hello. The bed creaked as he lay me against its surface. And so it was this. I, below him, sinking into soft sheets, and he, above me, admiring my every feature with a distinct tenderness I did not mind. Emily, will you always love me? Uh, I... The candles remained our only source of light. No modern extravagancies, no natural glow of the moon. The walls were imbued by the intimate shade of fire, and beyond their poor reach were the shadows that made the room feel smaller. Oh boy, what do we got going on here? Ha uh ha. -huh. Alright. These shades played into Lupin's eyes whilst he, ad whilst he admired me, and I, in turn, could only gaze back. The world was made of him and me, of this room and its dark weight, of the breathing I only barely realized was being held beneath his watchful eye. Will you let me hear your answer? Through all this, he was insecure. I remembered. All these emotions I was feeling could only be conveyed so much. My heart felt short of bursting through my chest, and the blush on my cheeks had never been more fierce than now, but he was still a coward. This moment... All moments of the past, and the moments that were to come, terrified him, as that was the coward's way, but he persisted for me. Played bold for me. Indeed, he spoke and acted with a vulnerable heart. I wanted to answer his bravery. I love you. You can be cruel, but you're also kind. You can be a liar, but you're faithful to me. I love you who found me. Who now looks at only me. I love you with all my soul, Lupin, and I always will. Thank you, Emily. And I love you. No one else can make me feel as whole. My heart is completely and utterly yours. Sight gave way to sensation as I closed my eyes. No. There was a kiss on my lips. A closeness, a rise in heat from bodies to which I confess I could not state who was which once two were bound into one. We kissed again. Deeper and more passionately, we kissed. As he drew me closer with an unrestrained wanting, I could feel his heartbeat through my chest. He could feel mine, and they soon raced together to a harmonious flutter. A heavy scent hung in the air. What a wonderful scent. It was. <clears throat> uh-huh. <laughs> what a way to end that scene. <laughs> Emily, why? Why do you do this to me, girl? Uh... <coughs> I'm lightheaded. Whew. <clears throat> Good. Good. Mm. Is it morning already? The light of day had come to greet me. I opened my eyes. I was wondering. I'm like, I bet you he'll have got her back home. Because otherwise, Pendleton would be like, what? Hmm? This wasn't right. I found myself not in the hotel of the night before, but in the comfort of my bedroom, dressed appropriately in a nightgown. <laughs> and next to my pillow was a card I knew well. The Queen of Hearts. Lupin? 
are you telling dad about your nightly escapade? And he's like, how could you end it there? <laughs> My son, how could you be so cruel? <laughs> oh, I swear. Uh. Wait, no, no, no. I am flummoxed. This isn't the end, is it? It is the end. Give up, Papa. Oh, ma foi. Never was there a more splendid disaster than this. If you have something to say, just come out and say it. You, my son, are spineless. I thought you a man. I thought you my flesh and blood. Don't you know? Your mother and I lost ourselves to passion the very day we met. That is not a story I want to hear. I don't intend to do things a certain way simply because that was how you did them. I'd prefer to nurture our love. Rubbish! Lies! True love is when you plan your time with her down to the letter. And then you watch those plans go flying out the window the second you lay eyes upon her. I know how to love her quite well, Papa. My method puts her needs first. Something you could stand to try once in your life. That cuts me deep, you road child. But fortunately for you, I am more proud to hear you speak of nurturing love. Never did I think this day would come. This is all thanks to the brilliant education I have given you. Perhaps you owe me a word of thanks? I know. Bring Emily home sometime. I shall welcome her the proper French way. I'd rather die. And I thought I said not to use her name. It makes me ill. Is this perhaps a manner of rebellion? Well, how about you? A father has more to fear in life than the spirit of youth. What? God help me. Why did you give me a father like him? You mean the best father? Hmm. How long have I been home? I was with Lupin, certainly, so how am I here? Was it all a dream, then? But if it wasn't, then I... <laughs> Speaking of dads, a sudden knock on the door caused me to sit up with Fluster. Pardon me. Good morning, my lady. Um, Pendleton. Regarding what happened yesterday... If you're concerned with what happened to Earl Bryce, then you needn't be. I sorted everything out. Please pay no attention to the new garden bed <laughs> in the pack. <laughs> Many stolen goods were found within his mansion, and there was evidence of his involvement in organized crime as well. Spellbound being one of his contacts, it seems. My heart is lighter with you having been rescued before anything happened, but I feel it may be worth continuing to investigate the man. You're right. Please do. But after that, I... You have been fast asleep since your return, my lady. Pendleton spoke whilst he removed the card from my bed. Oh dear. How did a piece of rubbish come to be on your bed? I shall dispose of it right away. No, no! Wait! That's... What is it? Is it something important to you? Uh, oh, no. That isn't it. Dash it all! He was much too clever for me to resist the idea without arousing suspicion. Knowing this battle would be lost, I lowered my hand with some reluctance. Oh, I am of the opinion that you should take the day off school and rest. Ah, yes. Speaking of school, I was told Lupin came to visit. What? He did? Indeed. It was Alicia who tended to him, so I didn't speak with him myself but he brought copies of his notes and the work you missed during your absence. I've left them on your table, so by all means, take a look at them. Now, if you will excuse me. I left my bed as Pendleton retired and wandered to my table. The notes he'd mentioned were present, as well as something rather unexpected. How? Isn't this case... It was a familiar white cutlery case. Oh my! I can't believe it! 
Within it, I counted 12 silver spoons, each one so immaculate they glittered in the sun. It's my present from mother and father. Could... Accompanying this case was a single red rosen card, which read, To my beloved, my unending thanks and love for your smile. May their future be one of bliss. <laughs> I am still amazed that out of all the boys, Lupin's, uh, not Lupin, Pendleton is like, ah yes, the gentleman thief is the one that has the most approval with me. <laughs> Cause he knows Lupin is Lupin and was just like, ah, he stole back what was hers. Excellent. I'm still throwing your card out in the trash, though. <laughs> I gotta play the part like I don't approve of you. Whew. Well. That was, uh, pretty, pretty spicy. Pretty spicy there at the end. <laughs> Freaking scent. Oh my god. <coughs> that was good. That was really, really good. The only thing I'm sad about is that we couldn't return the favor to Lupin somehow. Like, you know, he got our, our cutlery back. I was hoping that in some weird way, Emily's parents had actually known his mom from be before she met um, Arson Lupin. And there's going to be like a picture of her when she was younger, like much younger. And we would be able to give that to him, but that was not the case. So that's the only thing I was, like, disappointed about. Like, ah oh, man, I was hoping we'd get a picture of Mama for him. He, the boy did so much for us. Ah, oh. Right, well, <laughs> that was Jean Lupin's epilogue. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me. Now that all the good times are done, it's time to do his bad ending. So, yeah, if you want to see that, guys, hopefully I'll see you over there. Until next time, I will see you later.